Next up, we do have Tara Burns, and um, I will let Tara introduce herself. I'm Tara Burns. I am a sex worker of a few decades in Alaska, and I also have experience as a sex trafficking survivor as a young person, um, both being forced into work and also, you know, under the federal definition, um, working on my own on the streets uh, where I wasn't being forced to work, but my working conditions were much more dangerous. Um, so I'm gonna be talking to you about a lot of things, a lot more things than I had originally planned on, but we've, we had some rearranging of things, um, but just, just kind of like a background for all of this, right? Our working conditions in the sex industry are very clearly shaped by lawmakers and by police. So police officers and our state and federal legislators have the ability to decide if our work is gonna be dangerous or if we're gonna be able to work together in safety or if we're gonna be arrested for trying to report serial killers. Um, those are all things that are created by our state and federal policymakers and law enforcement. And when we look, you know, we can see really clear trends in how legislation has affected our lives and our safety and the rate of us being murdered in the sex industry. So we have a this whole weird, crazy Christian nationalist thing going on. I'm not gonna talk about Project 2025 because I haven't read the book, um, but I am gonna talk about some of the legislation, the state level legislation that we're seeing coming out of those that community of Republican Christian nationalist legislators, which is kind of a minority, I think, of the Republican legislators at this point, but may not be for long. Um, so we're seeing things, a lot of these bills, Mexican, can you go to the next slide? A lot of these um, have to do, if you hit the slideshow button too, it'll make them bigger. Um, a lot of these up at the top there, a lot of um, a lot of these bills, what they're using this kind of trick of redefining things, right? So they're going to redefine pornography and make pornography mean anything from a drawing of a nipple to uh, somebody wearing a bikini where you can see their nipples through the cloth. And then they're going to say, well, it's pornography. There's pornography on Twitter. Um, or they're going to redefine sex trafficking and they're going to redefine sexual exploitation. They're going to, they're just, there's so much redefinition in all of these bills. And we've seen that right with our, in our community, with the constant redefinitions of sex trafficking over the last few years. So we have to be very careful that we understand the legal definitions of the words that are being used, which often have different legal definitions in different states and also at the federal level. So these age verification bills usually create new definitions of online pornography that are very broad. They would include most of our escort advertising photos. Um, they would include drawings in some cases. And so these bills are being billed as targeting porn companies, but what they do is they create a civil liability or a fine for anybody who posts pornography to the internet that is seen by a minor. So for example, if you post a picture on Twitter that meets the definition of pornography and you do it from a state that has that state law, you could be fined. Um, these, these bills also try to get porn, pornography websites to institute like third party age verification databases that keep our customers IDs and those can be can have can and have been hacked and um, information leaked to the public. Um, another thing that we see if we go to the next one Maxine happening at the federal level and this is actually across all parties um, the, Dem the Democrats and the Republicans are doing this, are these expanded non-criminal definitions of sex trafficking, right? So we have this at the federal level where if a minor engages in a sex act and receives something, so this can include a minor who um, goes on a date with their boyfriend who's the same age and engages in a sex act and receives a free meal even, right? 
is sex trafficking at the federal level. And this is a definition that is part of the criminal law and also, you know, in VAWA. Um, and it's used primarily, right, for service providers so that service providers can say, well, we served 100 million mi vic minor victims of sex trafficking last year. And people think that that means 100 million minors have been trafficked in the sex industry. So now we see these state laws are trying to starting to bring in these same definitions and we're being told that this will bring more funding into the state. But they turn around and they use these high numbers as if they are the numbers of be people being actually trafficked in the sex industry. Um, and they use that to pass broader and broader definitions of sex trafficking to get more criminal prosecutions because everybody wants all of the sex trafficking, the, the actual sex trafficking cases to be prosecuted. So when they, you know, bring this to the legislate, the state legislatures and say, you know, our service providers are reporting 100 cases of sex trafficking of a minor last year, but there were zero prosecutions for sex trafficking of a minor. Legislators don't understand that that was probably a hundred minors who were trafficked according to this non-criminal definition of sex trafficking, and that there's not actually a need to make broader and broader laws to charge sex workers with trafficking ourselves. Okay, next slide. So, and then we're also in the in the federal and also the state laws seeing this for further criminalization of our clients. So at the federal level, you know, we've seen that clients who agree to purchase sex from fictitious minors that the FBI is pimping out um, are now charged with sex trafficking um, under at the federal level under, you know, the 1591, the same um, code that actual sex traffickers are charged under, right? So, and some of those cases, I mean, you read the charging documents in some of those cases, you're like, wow, this guy is a really bad guy. It's a good thing that they caught him. And then some of them, you look at them and you're like, well, how is the guy even supposed to know that this 40 year old cop was actually pretending that she was 17? Like the hints that she dropped about possibly being 17 were not very clear. Um, but broadly speaking, these bills will change the name of prostitution or solicitation to customers to sexual exploitation or to patron of a victim of sex trafficking. And under these really broad state laws, a victim of sex trafficking can basically be any sex worker in some states. And they make solicitation a more serious misdemeanor, or sometimes they make it a felony for the third conviction, or sometimes they just make it a felony. And this completely alienates our clients from the police. And our clients are our first responders in cases of actual sex trafficking. If somebody is being sex trafficked and being isolated and controlled, the only person that they're ever alone with are clients. And so we need our clients to be able to call the police and report sex trafficking if a trafficking victim asks them to, without having to fear that they're going to lose their jobs, their families, and their freedom. Next one. So again, this is following federal trends. So the federal government does not regulate prostitution. However, they are regulating prostitution. And a lot of that, we'll talk in the next slides about kind of the funding streams that are creating that, but just really, really broadly over the last 20 years, we see that states are following the federal example. They're following what the federal task force dollars are asking them to do. They're turning a lot of things that have been prostitution into promoting prostitution. And they're turning things that used to be promoting prostitution into sex trafficking. So we have sex workers in many states and also at the federal level, we have sex workers and sex trafficking survivors who have not hurt anybody and who sometimes are working completely independently, being charged with sex trafficking for aiding or facilitating their own prostitution or for having a place of their own prostitution. And now more recently, there is a push in many states to make that a sex offender registry crime so that if you are charged with aiding or facilitating your own prostitution, you can have a record for sex trafficking and have to register as a sex offender. 
Okay, next slide. So this is this is like this huge thing that I've been working on wrapping my head around and I cannot explain in 10 minutes, but I'm gonna do my best to kind of get it, get pieces of it from my brain to your brain. Um, so the Department of Homeland Security has made human trafficking. So the Department of Homeland Security is focused on defending the homeland, on on terrorism, right? And one of their 12 focus areas is human trafficking. But on the ground, the definition they're using of human trafficking is prostitution, right? And what this looks like is that they will do end demand stings where they arrest customers. It looks like Homeland Security agents getting hand jobs at massage parlors and then arresting and sometimes deporting the workers. The Department of Homeland Security has a blue campaign, which is a public awareness campaign. And it's also used to train law enforcement in how to do prostitution stings and engage in sexual contact with us and then arrest us and turn around and tell the media that they've rescued us from sex trafficking. Um, and so in this way, the kind of, it, the, you know, you don't think that prostitution, which is a misdemeanor crime, is something that would get you on the terrorism watch list, right? But actually a group of, I think, three or more people organized around illegal activity is a terrorist group. Our sex worker rights groups are terrorist groups under the federal definition. And that allows them to surveil us and to violate some of our constitutional rights because we are on these federal terrorist watch lists. So then we can go to the next slide, Maxine. There's all of this federal funding which flows through different federal offices um, but pointed at sex trafficking awareness or sex trafficking services or sex trafficking um, police task forces through the DOJ and stuff, right? And so through that, the Department of Justice, the Office for Victims of Crimes, et cetera, all of these different federal offices are able to impact um, prostitution policy and prostitution policing on the ground. The Federal Office for Victims of Crimes has put a, a lot of money in Alaska just in the last few years. It's, I think, over $12 million into anti-trafficking services. And some of what that looks like is our you know, anti-trafficking task forces that lobby the government to make the laws worse, to target us more which helps to create higher numbers of trafficking prosecutions that they can use to prop up the idea that they need more funding, right? Um, so in this month's edition of the Anti-Trafficking Review, which will be coming out in a few weeks here, um, Tatiana and Ajela and myself have an article about anti-trafficking funds in Alaska and how they've been used and how the use of them has has actually inhibited or resulted in exclusion from services for some victims. Okay, and then I was asked to also talk about the Green Party platform. Um, I love the idea of the Green Party. Like, I if they if the Green Party didn't hate me, I would probably be voting for them. Um, I'm just going to read you really quick. Um, some of the things that they say directly from their platform page. They say, we urge that the term sex work not be used in relation to prostitution. With the increasing conflation of trafficking, which is the violent and illegal trafficking in women and girls for forced sex with prostitution. So see that the way they use the, that word conflating there with the conflation, the increasing conflation of trafficking with prostitution. It's impossible to know which is which and what violence the term sex work is masking. No source in existence knows which forms of prostitution comprise forced sex and which comprise free will or choice prostitution. And then they go on to say that they support the Swedish model. Um, and 
refer to prostitution as a form of violence against women and girls throughout their their thing, which is really long. And I know I've go, gone over time now, so I will pass it back to Amber. Thank you, Tara.